So you've got Minikube installed and you've created a very simple Kubernetes deployment and service, but this week we're going to tackle actually creating a deployment and service for a custom application, building an image, and creating your configurations for your deployment and services so that it can be repeatable and you can share it with your application. Today we're going to go and deploy a custom application using Kubernetes and that's going to entail us doing a few things. That's adding a configuration map or config map to allow us to define configuration that our application can then use. We're going to create a deployment using our custom image and then we're going to wire up a service for that too. But unlike what we did in the previous tutorial using the kubectl run and kubectl expose, we're going to use configuration files in order to define these things with the exception of the configuration map. Before we can get started though, we actually need to be able to get images onto our Minikube VM. So make sure that you have started Minikube before you do this. So Minikube start, we'll get you there. And then you're going to need to set your local Docker client to point to the Docker server that runs inside the Minikube VM. So there's a way to do that actually. Uh, if you do minikube docker env, this will give you the same sort of things that a Docker machine would give you. And so that means if we put that into eval minikube docker env, this will get us connected to that particular machine. So now if we docker ps, you can see that there are actually already a lot of different things running. We're going to be working with the meal planning Ruby on Rails application that we worked through in the previous tutorial series. So if you don't actually have this on your machine, you can go and get that off of GitHub at github.com slash coder journey slash meal plan. And we'll be working off of where master is currently as of January 22nd, um, the SHA being a151C06. So Kubernetes doesn't work in the same way that it worked for us to use uh, Docker and Docker Compose locally where we were sharing our application through and we were building the image using Docker Compose. So in this case, we actually have to pre-build the image and then we have to specify to Kubernetes which image to use. So now that we're connected to the Minikube Docker host, we can actually use Docker build. And since we already have a Docker file here, um, we can build with this context. So we'll give this a tag of meal plan, and then we need to give it a version number. This is our first one. So uh, one makes sense to me. And this is because latest is not a version, and that's the default tag that it's gonna give you if you just build it as you know meal plan. Okay, now that our image is built, this will make it a lot easier for us to work with this later on. The next thing that we're gonna have to do, and just in this particular case, and this is not something you would do for real, but for this tutorial, we're not gonna be running our Postgres database inside of a Kubernetes managed pod yet. So we're going to run it as a normal Docker container on the Docker host. And then we're gonna to connect to it from the pod using an IP address instead of a name like we could before. Before we can actually do this though, we need to make a modification to the Docker compose prod file. We're gonna run all of this stuff as if we're in production. And that's going to be with our prod DB here. We need to actually expose the ports so that a container can, can talk to it. And this is, we're going to kind of fake like this is running on a separate server for the time being. So we're going to go from 5432 to 5432. This is the default Postgres port. So if you save this and quit out of here, you should be good to go. We can start this using script prod and then up D dash D prod db and then the next thing that we're going to need to do is actually create the database so we'll do script prod run dash dash rm prod app rake db create db migrate okay with all of that extra stuff out of the way, we're finally ready to move on to the Kubernetes aspect of this tutorial. And the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create a deployment. And we're gonna do this using a YAML file that lets us define all of the information around our deployment. And we're gonna put this inside of a new directory. So we'll make dir deployments. And then we will open up deployments meal plan .yaml. And then we have to specify quite a few things in here. So the API version that we're gonna be using is gonna be extensions slash v1 beta one. And this is specifically uh, for deployments as a kind right now. So we're gonna set the kind to deployment. This is just the name of the object inside of Kubernetes. And then we get to do some metadata stuff. So metadata is what, if we gave it a name, right? So if we did kubectl run, and then we gave it an image 
and we give it a name, right? So it'd be kubectl run nginx, image would be nginx one point whatever. So in this case, we're gonna call this meal plan. Next up, we get to create the specification for this deployment. So the spec is here, and this lets us say how many replicas we need. So we're only gonna use one right now, but we can spin this up later to be a higher number just so we can load balance it properly. We're gonna set a template that has metadata and then within there, here we have labels. So we're gonna call it app of meal plan, tier of backend, and then track of stable. And so what does all this mean? The template bit here gives us the overall settings for the pod that we're working with. The metadata lets us define extra things on here. So labels in this case, both the key and the value are things we're defining. So app is a key we're setting up, tier is a key we're setting up. And what this does is it gives us something that we can query Kubernetes with in order to get the right node. So we could say, oh, I need anything that matches uh, the label of app, meal plan, tier backend, but I want the beta version of it, right? So you could have a different track and then you could have containers that are running a separate version of the code that is considered beta. So it's not quite ready for production yet. This will come into play a little bit later on when we create a service also. Okay, also underneath template, we're gonna have a spec. Within the spec, we're gonna set up our containers and we only have one. We're gonna call it meal plan. It's gonna use the image of meal underscore plan one and then we're gonna set up some ports. So for the ports here, there's it's a little bit different. We can actually name our ports. So Rails is what we're gonna call this, and then we're gonna say that the container port is port 3000. And this name is pretty neat because what this means is that when we say Rails to something else, like a service, we don't have to give it the actual container port. It doesn't even need to know that. It just needs to know that it's looking for whatever the Rails port name points to. So that would allow us to be able to change this container port at some point in the future, and anything that we have pointing to the Rails port would still work. So this gets us most of the way to having a deployment, but there's one gotcha, and that is that we don't actually have any configuration that we can pass to this yet. So when we used Docker Compose, we had the ability to set an ENV file. Kubernetes doesn't have that. There's not an equivalent to an ENV file. You have secrets, and then you also have config maps. And in our case, we're gonna set up a config map that holds on to the same data that we had in our env.prod file. We're also not gonna be creating our config map from a file. We're gonna create it using a kubectl command but it's gonna be kind of a long command, so we're actually gonna write it in our text editor, copy it, and then just paste it into our terminal. So I'm gonna open a new pane here that's just gonna be config.txt, and I'm not gonna save this file, but we're gonna say kubectl, create config map, then we give it a name, so we'll call this meal plan config, and then we're gonna add a bunch of different lines here. So we're gonna say from literal, equals, and then this is gonna be the name of the key inside the config map. So we'll have Postgres user, and this is gonna equal meal planner. And the, where we're actually getting these values is from our env production file. I just happen to know that one offhand, but let's open up the env.prod and kind of translate these. So if we copy, if we get rid of some of these, if we get rid of these two, if we copy all of these and move them over here, and paste them, and then we lowercase the actual words, and then in front of it, we add a from literal. That'll get us where we wanna go, and then we just add a slash at the end here. The only part of this that's not quite true is that we're going to not be able to connect to the host as prod DB. So we're actually gonna put here is gonna be minikube IP, and that will give you the IP address for your minikube instance. Oh, we don't need the slash at the end of this last one either. So let me close that. So now if we copy all of this and we quit out, whoops. 
we should be able to just paste this and it created it. We can take a look to make sure that we set all these values properly by using kubectl get config map because it's just another object in Kubernetes land meal plan config and then we can tell it to give us output as yaml and so looking down in the data section we have postgres host and all these other values and it looks like all of those are set properly and this ip you'll notice it expanded and actually put the ip address in there so now if we reopen up our deployment we can come down here underneath ports and start adding env values unfortunately these are kind of cumbersome they're a little bit long so the name is going to be whatever we want it to be inside of the container. So remember, these need to be uppercase because they're going to be environment variables. So Postgres user will be one. And then we're going to tell it to get its value from a config map key ref with a name of meal plan config. This is the name of the config map itself. And then the key inside of it is going to be the lowercase version of the env value. So I'm going to copy this and we're going to do the same thing for everything that was in the env.prod that we moved over and then I'll bounce back afterwards. All right, I've added the rest of the env values. So now if we save this and we look at kubectl get deployments, you'll see that there's nothing there. And unlike last time when we created a deployment, we used kubectl run, gave it a name and then gave it an image name. This time we will use kubectl create and then we give it a file. We don't even have to tell it that it's actually deployment. It'll look in the file, figure out what to create, and then create it for us. So kubectl get deployments now will show us our meal plan deployment. And then that means if we look at our pods also, we can see that we already have one spun up and running. So this is cool, but it doesn't quite get us where we need to be yet because we need to be able to actually access this in our web browser so that means we're going to have to expose this using a service and we're going to create a service in the same way that we just created a deployment so we're going to make directory again we'll call the services and then we will open up mealplan.yaml inside there thankfully this declaration is going to be quite a bit simpler than the deployment so we're going to have the api version of v1 the kind is service the metadata will be the name of meal plan because this is the meal plan service. And then the spec for this is going to have selector B. This is actually what it's going to use in order to find the pods to point at. So these need to match what we had in our deployment. So we had app of meal plan. And then we want this to point specifically at anything that's a tier of back end. Next, we need ports. So we'll have a protocol. This is going to go to TCP. The port we want to use is 80. And then our target port, so this is what it's going to point to inside of containers, is going to be Rails, because that's what we named our port 3000 that was running inside of our container. Lastly, we have a type. We're going to call this load balancer. There are a few types that you can use for services. We're going to use load balancer because odds are when you actually go and deploy Kubernetes, you're going to be using something where this is the type that makes sense for you to use. Let's save this. And in the same way that we created our deployment, we're going to use kubectl create f. This time, we're just going to point it at the services file. Oops. Looks like there's a typo in there somewhere. Ah, yep, it's on line six, selector. Save it, try it again. And there we go, now we have a service. So if we get our services, you'll see that it's getting up and running. And then if you remember from the previous one to actually get access to a service that you create using Minikube, you can use Minikube service, and then you give it the service name and then pass it dash dash URL. And this will give us our full URL that we can use. So we'll copy this and then we will move over to the web browser and access it. So that worked out. It gave us our unstyled page if you remember back, we set our Rails application to use Nginx to actually serve up the assets so that the Rails app didn't have to do it. So that's why there, there are no styles coming over currently is because we don't have Nginx serving up those assets. But we still have Rails running inside of Kubernetes. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. We went through it kind of fast, but as always, you can find the code associated with this tutorial in the pull request that's going to be linked in the description of the YouTube video. Let me know what you thought about this. If you liked it, be sure to actually like it on YouTube and share this on social media. Let me know what I could do better in these tutorials. And also, I want you to tell me what you're going to be deploying using Kubernetes. I'll see you in the next tutorial. Have a great week.